Hello everyone! Welcome to the latest anime news for the week ending September 12th, 2020. And we're going to talk about a variety of things uh, today. Don't have things uh, pre-written today, so we're just going to kind of go with the flow. And we're going to start with the news about Project Scarred or Project S-Card. I am not sure. I assume it's Project Scarred. Um, this is a, a new franchise, or I'm sorry, a new television series in the Project Scarred franchise called Project Scar, S S Project Scarred, Scar on the Praetor, which I'm sure makes sense to fans of the franchise. Um, that is coming January 2021 on the Animism programming block. Uh, we have a variety of actors involved on it. Um, Go Hands is credited with the original work, which I really hope is a Dragon Ball Z reference. I'm not sure. Um, and then uh, Shingo Suzuki directing it. Uh, Tamazo Yanagi writing the scripts. Uh, Konish of Hitalia and Line Barrels of Iron composing the music. Uh, Tamazo Yanagi did a Handshakers and Wuz. I don't know. Um, with uh, a, a, folks, uh, of, uh, a variety of other folks involved. The franchise's story is set in a fictional ward of Tokyo, uh, which is formed as this sort of lawless, independent state after a rebellion called the Akatsuki Rebellion overthrew the corporate masters of the ward. So one of these, you know, fight the man storylines, I suppose. Um, and then there are three organizations maintaining order who employ agents known as Scarred. They are marked with divine tattoos. They grant them the power to turn away any bullet or blade, make them virtually invulnerable. Oh, and they're all hot guys. So, um, I think it's, it's kind of one of those things going on here. Um, I don't know, I, I look at this and I have the tendency to, to jump to conclusions about the kind of anime it's going to be, um, but it's certainly an interesting kind of uh, uh, concept there. Uh, has this raised any eyebrows with you guys? Not particularly. <laughs> Not really. Not really. It just sounds like Dan Man saved the Empire. That's that's just kind of what it sounds like to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, I haven't heard anything about anything related to it, or and I, you know, what I mean, so it's like totally out of the blue that this showing up and the key visual there doesn't. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, if it, I'll see what happens when some of the reviews start coming in through my anime list and some other stuff, and see mm -hmm. whether it, you know. What are they going to say about it? And, like, will that pique my interest there? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, let's see if this, this piques your interest. Whoops, not that. Um, no, no. This, there we go. <laughs> There's an anime coming up for The Saint's Magic Power is Omnipotent, if you couldn't tell from the things on the screen. Um, we don't know the format of the anime. It could be OVA, it could be TV. We're not quite sure. Um, the novel series and the manga adaptation has been t uh, uh, licensed by Seven Seas. The description from the, the publisher, it's about a 20-year-old office worker, office lady, who's whisked off to a new world. Um, however, the ritual that summoned her brought two people instead of one, and everyone prefers the other one. Um, so that she's kind of getting left in the dust and abandoned. Um, but sh she's actually fine by that because she kind of doesn't really want any of the responsibility anyway. So she's making potions and cosmetics with her magic and just kind of enjoying being the, uh, the background character in the whole drama. Um, her business is booming, um, and that might not be about such a bad life after all, unless her sainthood might come back to haunt her. Mm. Of course it will. We, we know that. Um, originally launched um, on the web in 2016, the novels, um, there are... Um, and the first novel was actually published digitally August 27th, so not that long ago, with the print version coming out soon, and the manga will be coming out December 8th. So does this pique your guys' interests at all? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's another isekai, and I, I'll be honest, you know, that a lot of people, the discussion, obviously, in the last several years has been, isekai, just kill me. But <laughs> I still like the genre. Mm -hmm. Um I've seen plenty of isekais where that's, you know, it's an interesting take that someone prefers the other because I've seen the ones where the guy gets summoned mm. and somebody who's standing next to him goes with him. There was, I can't remember the one. It's a mm. guy and his female friend mm. and she goes to grab him because she sees something's oh, going on around yes. him. Yes, remember that. It vaguely. just was last season mm -hmm. or 
Yeah, you know what I mean? So she grabs on, and she has magical powers, too. Mm-hmm. But he's, like, the dude, and <laughs> she's, like, the, the, the dudette helper. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's, like, her powers are also awesome, but he's getting top billing. Mm-hmm. So I, I welcome something where it's, like, you're going to get the attention on the really, really super person, and they go off somewhere, and then the other person just lives a freaking normal life, <laughs> finds to find their niche there in that world, and it's not being the great big giant, you know, ball buster in the universe. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yay! Although yep. in the end, obviously, that little catch lion, it's like, oh, we'll come back to haunt her. Of course, she's going to have to save the universe, <laughs> you know? But maybe at least we'll have some nice, this is how I'm doing stuff with my magic to be like a real person in this world. Mm-hmm. I'd like to see that mundane but it's relaxing. i'm hoping they treat it like um didn't i tell you to make my abilities average in the next life yeah where that was cute. you know it's it's cute there's obviously some larger plot that she's going to be involved in at some point because she is right. you know central but that's not the focus of the episodes you know it's having fun <laughs> moe girls doing moe things <laughs> i don't know this just says saving the world through cosmetics so i'm, I'm imagining like mary Kay people going would you like to buy some lipstick and <laughs> saves the universe somehow that way? Well, may, yeah. maybe she has know. she has to save the world because all the testing on the rabbits turns them into giant monsters. Mm. Oh, that's oh. no. Okay, I'm sorry. That's that's let's not go there. I, I I like it though. I'm sure somebody's done it at some point in anime. Um. Well, I I don't know. It had to have been a Simpsons, but it was something where they talked about animal testing. And the entire joke was like these rabbits had like long eyelashes and stuff, <laughs> and the people putting cosmetics on them are like, they are really good looking, you know, <laughs> like, like in a really creepy kind of way. It's like that would be funny. But, yeah. Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> what, an, what an attractive rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to Doctor Ramune, uh, which is getting a television anime adaptation. Uh, originally a manga, uh, Crunchyroll will st- be streaming the anime outside of Asia. Uh, they say soon after the TV broadcast, it doesn't sound like a simulcast. Uh, Crunchyroll says that uh, this is, okay, we're, I'm not going to go through the whole plot line. People get depressed and then they get like crazy disease, like going to destroy the world. And so um, this uh, mystery disease shows up. And so this doctor named Ramune shows up. Um, who is um, free spirit, foul mouth, doesn't even look like a doctor, but as soon as he comes across people with these mysterious diseases, he knows exactly what to do and goes in and knows exactly how to to heal them and take care of that. Um, and so you have the, the blonde uh, young man there is Dr. Ramune, and yes, that is a, a guy, um, and a very skilled doctor, although he... He um, is foul-mouthed and rude to most everyone. And then you have the apparently long-suffering assistant on the side, uh, the the rational one. Uh, So I think we all know where that is going. Um, Hideaki Oba is directing it. Alice in the Country of Hearts, Wonderful Wonder World, uh, Denko Cho Tokyo, Hikarian, Lightning Attack Express, and Hello Kitty, Ringo no Mori no Fantasy. Uh, He's directing the anime. Yep, that's the thing. Um, you're looking at the anime at uh, Platinum Vision, who did Devil's Line. Um, and Ayumu, Ayumu Hisao uh, is supervising. He worked on uh, The Sounds of Life. Um, and then character designs from the designer behind um, uh, Sayuki Reload Blast, among other things. Uh, manga launched in 2017. And um, they claimed in 2019 they published the final chapter, but uh, it is ret- resuming on Monday. The manga is so. Don't know um, that uh, that final chapter was of the third volume. So I guess there is more coming than anticipated, uh, and that is the the plan for Doctor Ramune. Kind of an interesting, odd publication history on that one. Well, I like the Hello Kitty Ringo No Mori No Fantasy. So it's Apple Forest Fantasy. Mm-hmm. Hello Kitty Apple Forest Fantasy. I'm like, what is that? Sounds like Hello Kitty. <laughs> let's be honest. I I am surprised that Hisao though. Kono Oto Tomari is a is a wonderful musical mm. um, a, a, a series about the Koto. And oh, it's it's, it's it's I mean they're they did some excellent work on the soundtrack cool. for that show, so that the actual 
ensemble playing of the Kotos is, is stunning. I mean, mm. it's it brings tears to your eyes. It's that good. Wow. Um, wow. So this, it seems, it's, it, I, okay, you got some interesting people involved in this. So mm -hmm. it's going to be interesting. I honestly thought when you said Dr. Ramane, I thought it was going to be something like Akikan, the one where it's the girls who come out of soda drink cans. <laughs> I thought it was going to be something to do with Ramane. Yep, I thought so too. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, so they're going to have, like, the doctor gives people, like, lemonade and they get better? <laughs> like, oh, geez. I guess this is one of those yeah. lost in translation moments, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, yeah, this just reads to me like if it's as if uh, House were an anime. <laughs> yes, and, and, and like had house. a Watson-like yeah. assistant for mm, house. Right? Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Um, looks like fun. Looks like something that uh, you know will just be an enjoyable watch. We'll find out. Um, speaking of an enjoyable watch, from what we can see so far, I have uh, I'm intrigued by seeing a bit of harmony. Uh, JC staff and Funimation announced on Thursday they are co-producing an original anime film titled Sing a Bit of Harmony, um, translated literally, it's Let Me Hear You Sing of Love, um, by Yasuhiro Yoshiura, the director of Time of Eve and Patima Inverted. Yes, that guy. Um, it will be opening in Japan next year, coming soon to the U.S. and Canada. Um, Funimation describes the film, and I will quote this one. The film tells the story of a new transfer student interested in her surroundings in a song that brings happiness to her and her classmates, which tells us nothing. Um, <laughs> uh, the script is being co-written by both Yoshiura and Ichiro Okuuchi, who wrote Code Geass, hmm, um, Princess Principal, and Seven Days War. Um, and then the character designs is by Kanaki, creator of the Umibe no Etranger manga, which I... Sounds familiar, but I'm not quite sure. And then character designer, or character, uh, uh, the uh, character adaptation for animation is done by Shuchi Shimomura, who worked on Honey and Clover and Odam Cantabile. So, yeah. Um, and uh, Umibe no Etranger is a, um, is a film, um, which I believe is a boys' love film. Um, so that is where I remember that from. Uh, but we don't get announcements of anime films that often, especially original anime films, um, and especially musical-themed anime films that aren't Love Live. So I'm definitely intrigued. Oh, I'm all over that. I'll, mm. I, I will I will happily see that when I get access to it in the next... Should be about two <laughs> years before mm, I get to see that, yeah. before I can mm. find that somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Unless, I mean, unless Crunchyroll, I don't, I'll say this much, Crunchyroll does not up their game for movies too well. Funimation. Yeah, I mean, as I say, so yep. I would have to get into Funimation or somebody would have to throw a Funimation house party mm. to get me to see it earlier than two years. So, <laughs> Yep. <laughs> I, oddly enough, these are this, this is a type of anime that I normally don't watch. I don't watch these musical kind of things a lot, mm -hmm. um, even though I like music in anime. Um, this is not something I normally watch. But I think I, I, I would probably keep an eye out for this one whenever it releases, simply because I enjoyed playing Clover so much, both, mm. both the, uh, the manga and the movie. I, I really, really enjoyed it. And uh, so since there's that connection there, I, I'm be curious. I'll, I'll give it a try. What also kind of surprises me about this is what's not in there. I was waiting when reading that description for, and then she meets a certain boy. Right. Um, but there's no indication in this that it's, it's a romance. Um, so that would be kind of a, a, a nice shift. If it's, if it's, well, I mean, you know. Love Live doesn't have any, True. any boy romance. k doesn't have any boy romance. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, so you... True. I'm more than happy to see a... Uh, what was the is was it Iska the one that was the there was a slight bit of romance it was a girl who was reluctant to sing in a band mm. and everybody loved her voice and there was one lead guy who was trying to get her to get into the band I think it was called Iska mm. is As Asuka mm. Iska Asuka something like that mm. but you know what I mean it's nice to have one where it's hopefully it's just gonna be really good 
camaraderie and good toe tapping songs please mm-hmm. be a good song <laughs> don't you know don't have this great anime a great character development and then just be like dial the songs in mm-hmm. <laughs> like no don't do this to us please yeah um and it's uh, the writer of code Geass, so things are going to explode a lot uh, i'm joking oh, yeah. i'm kidding <laughs> you know um but we'll 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 see it's going to be backstabbery and all kinds of <laughs> horror involved. <laughs> it's going to be full of Michael Bay explosions. <laughs> no, no, it will let's, not. Let's, let's not do that. Hopefully, um, it'll be explosive musical numbers. There we go. Ah, I like ah, that. Ah, see, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> much like the apple. Uh, no, no, like exactly at all. Um, so more news about anime events going online. To no one's surprise, um, the semi-annual Jump Special Anime Festa will be making the jump to the internet. Crunchyroll makes it funny there. Um, uh, And uh, so the Jump Special Anime Festa 2020 uh, will be streamed on YouTube on October 11th uh, from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m., which is actually kind of nice. You get a a three-hour block, announce everything, get it all done. Um, The plan is to show a preview of the upcoming Demon Slayer movie. Uh, which will release later that week in Japanese cinema. Um, new footage for Dr. Stone Season 2. Um, a preview of Jujutsu Kaisen, the new TV anime coming out, which starts October 2nd. And an original anime for the Shonen Jump Plus manga series, Bokyaku Battery. Um, so it's basically just a bunch of, of anime clips for a couple hours there, um, emphasizing the stuff coming out of uh, Shonen Jump. Um, and the other nice thing is that both Dr. Stone and Jujutsu, Jujutsu Kaisen will be uh, on Crunchyroll, uh, uh, dropped on the Crunchyroll once they're released in Japan. So those are both Crunchyroll shows. Um, this is a little interesting because I think one of the things we've been seeing up until this point is more just like whole conventions going online. And this is somebody saying, no, this is, like, this is an event we normally would, would do. We'd have a stage, we'd, we'd be all this stuff. Instead, we're just going to condense it all into a couple of hours, put it online, everyone can watch it, we're done. Um, I, I appreciate folks kind of adapting the format a little bit more to what we're going through. Well, this entire year has been since your groundbreaking yeah. on, on con. It's like I, like I had said several weeks ago about FunCon, you know, mm-hmm. Funimation, that, you know, the bigger organizations have been like tinkering with this and trying to get it down to like a, a workable kind of thing that they can do mm-hmm. which yeah. you know depending on how 2021 20, goes this will be very interesting to see how then if you're going to boil it down and figure out how to do this now at the end of 2020 mm-hmm. and you get it into a working format what happens when we can do cons again yeah how will that fundamentally change the way that we do cons mm-hmm. it's like that'll be interesting well, and folks, I'm talking about that, this in the video game world for a long time because uh, E3 was where all of the video game companies would come out and yeah. announce their games. But then, like Nintendo would just do a video; they'd release like a 45 minute video and show that, and then everyone would you know see that online. It would be fine, and they didn't have to you know they'd still be at the event, but that would be sort of their 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 big showcase. And then you know COVID happened. And everyone's like, let's do that. Let's just you know release everything on the and it works fine. You know, yep. everyone watches that at home and all that kind of stuff. Yep. And folks are realizing, hmm, like there's clearly a place for conventions, but maybe the whole like announcing things, um, like at a convention makes more sense in another, like, like an online streaming venue or whatever. Um, right. And that way we can kind of control it. We can kind of, you know, adapt that more, more effectively rather than, you know, show up at our panel at 3 p.m. in, you know, panel room five. Right. And then everyone who's there gets to know, you know, meh. I, yeah, I was going to say, when I go to conventions, that's actually the one thing that I don't go to, is I don't go to industry stuff. Same here. I don't, you know, because there's, there's other things that, that I'm, that I want that I'm interested in. And, you know, unless it is a, a screening of something new, like when they came out with the Full Metal Alchemist movie mm. uh, back at Otakon many years ago, where they had the director show up, um, you know, then I'll go and see something like that. I like this idea better of having a YouTube video thrown up and anybody can go in there and watch it and be, and, and it does itself a favor by being massively inclusive as opposed to, yeah. as you're pointing out, 
panel five yeah. or you know panel <laughs> room five at 3 p.m and if you're on the other side of the con too bad mm -hmm. you know at least this way everybody gets to see it so you you're serving yourself a little bit better i would think well and it's allowing so many more people to come in well and especially at larger cons where i could go to that panel or i could not go to the panel and load anime news network an hour later right like it's it's gonna be on like we'll know all the details in no time. So it really right. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm curious. Um I also appreciate that they're um again in sort of the situation we're in, that they're they're telling you, you know, here's what you will see. You know, right. we're not gonna build yeah. up expectation for something, it's just no, you know, show up, you'll see a, a adaptation to this thing. I think that's that's handling it well. Um that is not the only uh, convention news we have this week, however. Um, the Rojinchi Convention Komitia, Komitia announced on Saturday it will hold its uh, 134th event, apparently, um, on November 23, Komitia 134, um, after a crowdfunding campaign that raised over 100 million yen, 100 million yen, um, uh, uh, and uh, it's a lot of yen, um, applications to participate as a vendor are now open as well. Uh, these, these cons are held several times a year and are intended, interestingly, for original works only. So these are not dojinchi of existing art. This is dojinchi in the classic original sense of this is your own original story you're telling in comic form. Um, uh, which is kind of moved, you know, Comic Cat has some of that, but it's kind of, you know, the, the parody stuff has kind of overwhelmed Comic Cat um, and is kind of focused on that. Uh, the previous two events uh, in May and September were canceled due to COVID-19, obviously, as have like Comic Cat 98. Um, now, the committee stretch, um, stresses this may still be subject to cancellation, but they are planning on holding like an actual physical con. Um, the crowdfunding cam campaign is on the Motion Gallery website. It will still run through October 23rd, so plenty of time to get it on that. Um, and so that is that. Uh, we might actually see a... A, a Comic Con this year. Imagine that. Uh, would be would might, wow. might be kind of nice. It would be nice. <laughs> I like the idea of like the original work. Yeah. Yeah, I like, I like that the idea too. Of, of original work and and seeing new stuff because that's that's actually one of the things I do look for when I go to artist galleries mm. and and things like that conventions and uh, you know just see you know if someone comes up with like a their own story. You know, mm. That's actually how I got. I, I started the, uh, was it, um, Drama Con manga? Came oh, yes. Drama Con. Uh, yes. Was, yeah. Drama Con. And, um, you know, I love that just because it was this totally original, totally just about conventions, you know, and it, it was kind of neat. At, and uh, Mega Tokyo. And, yep. yep Drama Con. I was curious. <laughs> wow. Um, Though, interestingly enough, uh, she is a transplant from Russia to, yeah. Amer to Canada. I think Canada, so, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. and, yeah. And this is her, her, her effort. And um, it's, it's a fun little thing. Don't take it seriously. It's, it's, it's actually a fun little, little manga. But I like things like that. And I like coming across new things. And, totally. And seeing that stuff. And that, that, so, well, hopefully. Th there was this whole thing. Um, I, I went to a panel with one of the guys who runs Comic Cat, and he was talking about the history of Comic Cat and said this was kind of one of the, the, the big controversies of Comic Cat over the years is that originally it was, originally Dojinchi was just, you know, um, original works. You could do a parody, but the vast majority of them were original. And right. then when uh, right. the, the market started up and people started like actually trading seriously, all of the, you know, um, uh, I say parody, not in the sense of comedy, but all the stuff that was based on original work just completely swamped everything else and it really sw uh, swapped over. And a lot of folks, you know, miss the fact that you could go to a comic cat and you'd see all of these original stories being told by all these original people. Um, and that's changed. So, yeah, I, I love the fact that they have a uh, something dedicated exactly to that, and gosh, that cover! I'm like, yes, I want that manga. Like, please, let me let me buy that Dojinchi. <laughs> cool stuff. Um, moving along, time changes, time flows, and so this year, or very soon, uh, well, actually this year, and then going into next year, is the 30th anniversary of Nadia and the Secret of Blue Water. 
Um, yep, aired from 90, 1990 to 1991. And um, there's an official Twitter account, of course, because Twitter. And there will be a special exhibition coming up to celebrate the anniversary. That will be held in 2021. Uh, it will display various product materials from the show, reference drawings, key animation, drawing cells, backgrounds, etc. Um, the info uh, website says the exhibition will, will offer content for both those who were watching audio when it aired and those who have recently discovered it. I don't know what that means, but it sounds interesting. Um, there will also be, of course... To no one's surprise, original merchandise for sale. Um, so you'll be able to get that only if you go, I'm sure. Um, and then uh, further details will be announced soon, hopefully. Um, and so that is a thing coming. There's also a um, standard edition Blu-ray box set coming from King Records on December 16th, 2020. Yes, that's right. King Records was one of the um, producers of Nadia, thus the lion. Um... Um, it will set you back a mere 22,000 yen um, for its seven discs of content, which is the same as the previous box set released in 2011. But it's a, it's a, uh, it's a special box set, so you got to own three copies of it, right? That's how that works. Um, so, yes, Nadia is 30 years old. Sponsor I won't take you there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow, 30. God. King Recordo, Grand Sponsor no take you there, Okurishimas. There we go. Very good. I just can't believe it. Wow. Yeah. That's, mm -hmm. and we were just watching that, not that, you know, that many yeah. months ago. Mm -hmm. Wow. I need to get my walker out. <laughs> well, I mean, I get you know, Brent, Brent, that's like, Brent that's 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 that. time flows. It's, mm -hmm. you know, pretty soon you're going to see, you know, uh, Beyblade, the 40th anniversary <laughs> of Beyblade, be like, oh. Uh, oh. Oh, yeah. I'll be I'll be hit I'll be hitting the computer screen with my walker. Turn what? it to the next channel. Put in, it on some of the else. In, in fairness, I think one of the reasons that is shocking is that Nadia does look very timeless. You know, one of the things they achieve with yeah. Nadia is that it feels like a Miyazaki movie. It feels like something that was could have yeah. been made five years ago. Um, so yeah, that that is one of the weird things about Nadia. Um, they, well, they, you they know, and that's interesting for Nadia. And again, you know. In another 30 years, Akira will still stand up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. And it's like, Lucky Lucky Star will mm. also stand up. Because I think the style that it's done in mm -hmm. doesn't, like, Kimigori Orange Road. Yeah. It really. <laughs> that is an 80s really, show. That is an 80s or show. Or Woo. Golden Boy. You yeah. know what I mean? Those look like yeah. they are because they were trying to achieve something with the budgets that they had at that time versus something like lucky star it's specifically looks like that style yeah so you really can't particularly mm. put your thumb on it because it's not the best you can do at the time mm -hmm. it's like pop team epic yes it's a specific style mm -hmm. so yeah i right no. you're doing this with your I, face what i i, I laugh what? because I remember watching Kimigori Orange Road and thinking in, 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 you know, going along with it and thinking this is, this is, you know, definitely it feels like the eighties. I think it's episode two. We cut to his two sisters working out, wearing leotards, leg warmers, <laughs> and like the, the head strap. I'm like, wow. Yes. We have entered the eighties. Like we it's are. the Jane Fonda workout. Right yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, jazzercise anyone? <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, that was definitely yeah. a part of his time. Which I, mm. I would be very, you know, that'd be a curious question to ask if you could get a smattering of, of people that are involved in, in actually mm. making the, the, the anime, not just a single franchise, but across the board to be like, you yeah. know, are you gunning, knowing full well, looking back mm. 20 or 30 years at how things don't age, do you as an artist gun for something that will have an element of style that is not pegged to your time frame that you're trying to make it either abstract enough or realistic enough that it will hold its weight mm -hmm. for time yeah that'd be a good yeah. question to ask it's a good question um and i also wonder how often it's pragmatic if it's the you know the producers the the, the production company saying i don't care if they exist in five years you know it just Pump it out, like like make it right. happen. 
Um, make, comp- make the money now. Right, exactly. And, uh, you know, getting back to the, the, the thing about Akira, you know, Akira had the advantage that, it, you know, its creator was making it. And so he had a vested interest in making sure that it was evergreen. Um, you know, but it, when you're making, yeah. you know, today's romantic comedy, it's like, eh, it's, it's fine. You know, I don't care. Um, it's, it's a good, it's a good question, uh, and I wonder how much tension there is there. Uh, and you know, you look back, like, like original Gundam, that was clearly made to be timeless and does not look timeless. Right. You know. No. <laughs> but looking at something like the quintessential Quints, mm-hmm. I enjoyed that. It was, it was fun. It was a neat little show. What? And you know, again, this is you know, I'm not a prognosticator of the future, mm-hmm. but what really in anime? could so substantially change yeah. like the amount of uh, a tech that you could throw at something in 1988 mm. is far different than you you could throw at something now uh sidonia no kishi mm. the knights of sidonia mm-hmm. you know you, you all the advances in cgi and integration of like drawn material with the cgi moving forward mm-hmm. what you know is anything now gonna look particularly different 20 years from now mm-hmm. and i mean is the anime in 20 oh, yeah. years going to be so substantially different that you'll look at the anime in 2020 and be like oh no oh gosh that's well, so dated be like <laughs> hard to tell well I, I i i think it will certainly happen if nothing else because styles change um you know, i think it's so fascinating that like the way anime was made really didn't change until about 1998 um, in the sense of, you know, the, the fundamental production process of drawing and coloring and all that kind of stuff all the way through. It was a matter of how many people you could throw at that, th- those problems and how skilled they were. Um, and yet Astro Boy does not look like Akira, right? Um, yeah. And I think just that, you know, styles change, approaches change, um, and which is why I think you, you can have stuff like... Um, some of the anime films from like the sixties and the seventies, it had this like really butter smooth animation that can really hold up in a sort of artistic way, in a way that a lot of the stuff from later on just cannot because, like you say, they were going for a more universal approach. Um, it could work that way, be, you know, and it could work that way in the decades to come because fundamentally they still looked the same. Um, but now, you know, you could not make Sidonio Nokishi in nineteen eighty five. Oh, no, no. Mm-hmm. no. You would need, like, a crazy budget, and uh, you just can't substitute CGI. Right, the exactly. CGI capability yeah. of that. You know, it's like, I can't imagine how many hand-drawn frames you would have to get <laughs> to replicate a CGI rendering. Mm-hmm. It would, I mean, it would be literally all the money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fascinating. Um, so that's not the only historical, um, story we have today, actually. Also want to talk about a, um, a (laughs) special event for the manga Drifters, which is a story about various historical figures all thrown together into one sort of fantasy world and all fighting each other. Um, and there's going to be an online event showcasing the original artwork of Drifters and the history behind the series protagonists because... Um, the protagonist, Shimatsu Toyohisa, is a uh, Sengoku period samurai, and this is the 450th anniversary of his death. So that is what they decided to peg this anniversary on, was the historical death of the protagonist of Drifters. Um, the virtual event will be a Zoom um, uh, broadcast on September 20th. Uh, it'll show original artwork by the series creator, Uh, a tour of the house lived in by the lords of the Shimatsu clan, and a display of two swordsmanship styles practiced by that clan, Taisho Ryu and Jigen Ryu, which which will be the first demonstration of its kind in 416 years. Yeah. Uh, The house tour will be jointly guided by a Shimatsu history expert named Alex Bradshaw, and a, Sheng, a Sengan and curator and subculture enthusiast named Takuo Iwakawa. And they'll provide explanations, bridging the connection between the manga and real history. Um, they'll also show some uh, replica armor, um, things along those lines. 
and uh, this is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. They'll be touring. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, attendance for the virtual tour will cost you. So that'll be 3,500 yen, please, for that event. Um, but uh, go on the website and you can take part in that streaming event. So this is an interesting one because this is not your typical, like, event. Um, no. <laughs> and they're also, like, charging a lot for it. It's just, uh, I mean, that's, it's, it's cool, but yeah, it's kind of, that's different. <laughs> see, for me, this is like, this is like, you know, just take my money. Just mm. take my damn money. Here's my credit mm-hmm. card. Because this is, this is what I'm into. This sure. is, this is so, so what I would, if I was in actually physically in Japan, these are things that I would be doing. Mm-hmm. Um, to, you know, going through a house like that, through a clan house like that, and then seeing sword styles that are claimed to not have been publicly viewed in, oh, what, centuries? 400 years? 400 years. years. 400 years? Yep. You know, things like that, that's just, uh, you know, to me, that would be amazing. And it and it fits right in, right, like, right before the, the Tokugawa period, and it's just like in the, you know, the Warring States period, if I'm doing my math correctly. And, um, yeah, this just you know, yeah, just take my money. Just take well, it would be it'd be something to be at. Yeah, yeah. Not mm-hmm. that it, yeah. not that I'm trying to take away from the fact that we can't be at. Mm-hmm. You know, certainly given the times and obviously the distance, yeah. but you know, so this is the next best thing that you're going to be able to do. But you know, just to, oh, it just makes you want to like oh, I want to be there. I want to I want to watch and hear the flutter of sleeves mm-hmm. and the move of the blade. Yeah. I you know. Mm-hmm. Mm, Yep. Hmm. Yeah. Next best thing. Yeah, well, not quite. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, around thirty-five bucks a person to, to take part in this, mm. Uh, mm. which is a little steep, but you know, that is that is that is the thing. Um, oh. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm presuming it goes to support the museum and I, yeah, everything, I'm, all the other associated yeah. stuff with it. So, so it's for it's arguably a good cause, mm-hmm. maybe. I guess. Yeah, sure, sure. So, um, sure. <laughs> their, their, yeah. their little their publicist is like, sure, sure. <laughs> Go towards very important historical work regarding my bank account. Um, exactly. No, no, I, I, yeah, I think you're right. Well, that's the thing. You know, given the fact that this is tied very heavily to historical places and so forth, I'm, I'm sure there's something yeah. involved there. Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's got to be a kickback to support the museum and support the mission. So, mm-hmm. yep. Um, speaking of that, sporting... I don't use kickback as in like the illegal <laughs> thing. Kickback, you know, you know what? Good thing, good things, exactly. Yeah, good things, good things. Um, speaking of good things, um, Hiro Mashima has announced, or the official website for Weekly Shonen Jump or Weekly Shonen Magazine has announced an online autograph session by Hiro Mashima, uh, creator of Fairy Tale and Eden's Zero. This will be on October seventeenth. Um, 80 winners have, uh, will be selected from Japan, North America, that's U.S. and Canada only, uh, China, France, and Italy. They'll get an illustration of the character they request, holy smokes, by Hiro Mishima. Um, the session, session will be held for two to three hours on October 17th, starting at, I think that is uh, 8 p.m. Um, Japan Standard Time. Um, it'll be live streamed on the magazine's official YouTube channel. You can sign up for the event by filling out an application form um, uh, anytime between September 15th and September 30th. And the winners will be announced on the day of the event, uh, which is again October 17th. Given the fact that he is going to draw 80 illustrations in less than three hours, I would not assume anything particularly detailed, but still, that is pretty darn cool. Yeah, Somebody's going to have a ter- terrible case of carpal tunnel. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Again, that's one of, the now, th- it, go ahead. one of the things I was going to say is that one of the things I enjoy about Comic Cons and things like that is actually mm. watching people, you know, draw draw their characters out and stuff like that. But I mean, doing 80, I mean, I might just watch just to see if, if we could do 80. <laughs> and, and, by the, and by the end of it, just be like, going, ah, oh, smiley face. So <laughs> smiley <laughs> face. Stick figure, smiley face. Right. Oh, come on. <laughs> well, it, this guy's, he's, he, his thing is fairy tale. Mm-hmm. 
Um, can you can you request things like REM or like a different franchise? Good question. I don't know. That would be fun. So it's I, that I've would be seen. Amusing. Can I, you draw I, Superman? <laughs> <laughs> I've I've seen that happen to like uh, folks at, at at cons, and their reaction is, "I'll try, but I don't have experience with that character." <laughs> so you know, you get what you ask for. You know, it's like, all right. Results may vary. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's awesome. You do a really oh, cool goodness. Spider-Man for me. <laughs> <laughs> I can I, I can do Spider-Man. Not gonna be really cool, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, dear. Um, moving right along, uh, some other kind of fun news this week. Um, TV Asahi did an Anna Song General Election 2020 television program. It was a two and a half hour program airing on Sunday that counted down the 30 uh, best anime songs of all time. Uh, I am not sure how they rank that. Um or how the election worked. Um, the special was hosted... Yeah, I'm sure. The special was hosted by Matsuya Onoe with guests Takaya Kamikawa, Atsuko Takahara, Rena Takada... Sorry, Rena Takeda, and Yuki Yamada. Um, uh, the top song, which we'll get to in a second, is a popular karaoke choice. Um, it was uh, voted by fans as the definitive anime song of the Heisei era. Um... And apparently it's so popular in karaoke that some amateur singers are have reported being tired of singing it, um, but it's still uh, uh, ranked higher, uh, very highly. Um, and the writer has claimed that she um, earns over $895,000 annually in royalties from the piece. Yes, that's almost a million dollars a year in royalties from this one song, yeah. Um, the uh, So I'm gonna count down the top 10. Um, number 10 was Inferno by Mrs. Green Apple from Fire Force. Number nine was God Knows by Aya Hirano from the Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya, which I thoroughly support. Number eight was Get Wild by TM Network for City Hunter. Classic show there. Number seven was Gurun no Yumiya by Linked Horizon for Attack on Titan. Number six was Only My Railgun by Fripside for a certain scientific railgun. Number five was Touch by Yoshimi Iwasaki for Touch. Um, number four was Butterfly by Koji Wada for Digimon Adventure, the very first opening theme song for Digimon. Um, number three was... Um, Uchu Senkan Yamato by Isao Sasaki for Space Battleship Yamato. Number two was Gorenge by Lisa for Demon Slayer, Kimetsu no Yaiba. And number one anime song of all time, according to this poll, was Cool Angel's Thesis by Yoko Takahashi for Neon Genesis Evangelion. Yes, that was at least voted by this. The, the biggest one of all time. Um, and certainly, I think, just a, a signal of Evangelion's universal success. Yeah. I wonder if they somehow... I mean, was there actual voting, or did they literally just sort of set up a contest that ran in karaoke bars? So, like, every karaoke bar just gave their playlist over, and that, you know, out of a hundred of them in the Tokyo metropolitan region. Mm -hmm. These were the top songs out of the, out of the karaoke bars. Yeah. I am, okay. I am not sure the, um, um, there was a vote. Let's see here. Um, uh, there was the Heisei Anasong Grand Prix, um, which was a, um, a similar thing. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, the funny thing is, um, the, uh, at the Heisei Anasong Grand Prix, uh, the two reigning champions of Anasongs were Cool Angel's Thesis and, um, Agape from UFO Ultra Maiden Valkyrie. I, I don't know. I don't know why. But uh, <laughs> that is apparently a, a, a hugely popular Anasong. I, I suspect some... Uh, some vote rigging may have been going on there. Some, some, 
something happening at on an internet forum pushing votes. I don't know. UFL Valkyrie was was it? So, I wouldn't have thought that it would have been the top of really much of anything, <laughs> much less the songs from it. So. Mm -hmm. You know, all I know is that here in Baltimore, you have a 50-50 chance. This is why the Evangelion song, uh, Cool Angels, thesis doesn't surprise me. You have a 50-50 chance of any Baltimore sushi joint playing that song at some point. Really? Yeah. Like, yeah, like really? you can hear it like that. Yeah. We have like a, actually quite a few sushi shops here, mm. um, uh, here in the city. And I tell you like about... If I go ten times in a year, at least five times, I'm going to hear that song. Wow! Song. And I've, it's, I've it's, never heard it anywhere he's just, other than that 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 summer festival at the North Carolina State Fairgrounds. Mm -hmm. I, I heard it there when they did it for that festival, but mm -hmm. I've never heard it anywhere yeah. else. Yeah. The first time I heard it was was uh, in a in, actually in, in Fel, uh, Federal Hill in a bar uh, a sushi joint in Federal Hill. I'm blanking on the name of it. And I'm sitting there with you know um, with friends, and we're sitting there, and the song comes on, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. midway to my mouth, angels like, attack! Oh no! I know this. I know this. Didn't we be underground or something? But, uh, but yeah, it's it's. Did you stand dun, up and dun, sing dun, along? Dun, 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 dun. I, no, I was I was humming. <laughs> I didn't speak, but I was humming. <laughs> and and like you know, of course, the pe some of the people who knew that I uh, watched anime, they're just like. <laughs> is this really steve really and i'm like yeah it's from evangelion <laughs> Steve don't know what that is but okay <laughs> but, uh, they thought yeah. you were having a stroke for a second because <laughs> yeah, you just right. stopped dead in your place uh <laughs> it's yeah, not a you have a, a pretty... <laughs> <laughs> wow um, <laughs> what, a, what an impact on your life it has in both of those respects. <laughs> and anime ruins your life, so it's a stroke. So, hey, there you go. Nice. Yeah. Um, you, know, you haven't even seen it of, of your wow. anime song. Um, no, the only time I've heard anime music in public that I can recall is I went to like a ramen shop um, in DC and they had like Miyazaki soundtracks playing in the background. Uh, so, just put on, you know, just uh, you know, yeah, Miyazaki songs yeah. and. Uh, so it's like, oh, that, that's nice. And it was just, you know, the the uh, the instrumental pieces. So it was very much background noise. Um, but yeah, that's interesting. That's that's. I I can't say it's surprising. I mean, Evangelion was absurdly successful. Yeah. Uh, it continues to be absurdly successful. Um, but yeah, that that is the thing. Um, I also wonder if it isn't also the uh, success breeds success, where it's just, oh yeah, Evan, everyone knows Evangelion, so I'm going to sing Evangelion because everyone knows Evangelion. You know that whole whole right. thing. I do distinctly remember um, seeing a uh, conversation online. Somebody said, um, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, somebody's singing an anime theme song on American Idol. And it's like, really? What is it? It's the end theme to Evangelion. Fly me to the moon. And they're like, no, that's jazz. That is just a jazz song? <laughs> like, I think it's just... Jazz. <laughs> it's not like when the Towson State University band, marching band, did Hank. Right. Or, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Um, like we needed a moon. Exactly. Awesome. Um, <laughs> finally, we must touch on this news item for this week. We cannot avoid it. Um, um, Eric Trump uh, posted uh, that when he searches for mob or mobs into Google, he gets something that has nothing to do with actual mobs. It's all Mob Psycho 100. Uh, and this, yes. Uh, and, uh, uh, yeah. Um, and, and claimed that, uh, that Google was, was changing things around to, uh, to ignore the actual mobs in, in reality. Um, which, which resulted in Mob Psycho 100 trending on Twitter. Um, and so, uh. The official Japanese and English PR accounts both commented on this, and I, I do love that reaction. Hello, I heard I'm trending. Uh, that's, that's pretty funny. Um, and uh, there is stuff there. And the unfortunately, the Japanese one was just, hey, we're trending. You should watch the anime now. Um, but that is that thing. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that, that is the thing that happened this week. It was, uh, it was pretty funny. 
But yes, um, if you haven't seen Mob Psycho 100, it is, uh, it's an experience. Uh, it, it, it's a thing to check out because of just how much of an experience it is. Um, I, I will say... Um, I am, like, legitimately surprised that if you type mob into Google image search, like, that much Mob Psycho 100 comes up. Like, I would expect some, but I wouldn't expect it to, like, take over that much. That is kind of surprising. Um, you know, it's one of those things where it's a, you know, yes, I can see there being some associations, but the fact that Google says, oh, mob, that must be the only thing you want to know about. Well, we also don't know in entirely what was typed in mm. you know what i mean it's like e, um depending on what search what? terms that were left <laughs> no, out, no, no, like no. oh i looked this do, up and this is what happened do it now go to images at google.com and type in mob type in mob just mob okay. m-o-b m-o-b all right all right images. like i'm doing that now literally yeah. oh, every okay. single image is mob second 100 Okay, that's genuinely really weird. <laughs> like, what? maybe the tenth line actually I, has I a Chicago wish, mob. I, I wish I was in the room the first time he did this. <laughs> like, look, the reaction. look at all these colorful kids who are co ta doing all these things. That weird haircut. They're just causing chaos. Like, well, uh, I'm, cartoon, sir. So I'm going to check something. Um, yeah, I just, I just did a private window. Same thing. There's like one mob on like uh, like real life mob on like line three, um, yeah. one on line five, but otherwise it's all mob psycho one hundred. Why is uh, this a thing? Like apparently, and I would, I did, did you see the one where it says the real life mob families of the Irishman? Yeah, and it shows a picture of actually Donald Trump. Huh? Yeah, that's weird. That is weird. And which yeah. in between. Oh, huh. mob psycho pictures. That's really because I I would have thought not that that would would have been a joke, but I would right. have thought that you like maybe you typed something weird in sure. that yeah. brought mob yeah. psycho and that you right. yourself didn't recognize that you'd done something funny, mm -hmm. and then we're like, oh my gosh, the, you know, you change the algorithm and uh, every, how everything in Google works. It's like no, you must have just typed something like an apostrophe or some weird character that brought that up. Mm. But no, actually, that's <laughs> not the case. <laughs> It's bizarre. So actually, somebody That's I follow weird. said um, somebody uh, uh, somebody he followed you know, does a whole bunch of uh, videos on YouTube, and he posted a video about I forget who it is, but some you know like Miles Davis, I think was who it was, um, and got much fewer views than most of his other videos, and said I wonder why that is. Is it the title? Is it the length? All that kind of stuff. And this this person commenting said, I wonder if maybe YouTube just thinks that Miles Davis isn't popular. Um, and it really got me thinking about what YouTube's algorithm actually does. And I wonder if YouTube's algorithm has gotten to the point where it's kind of over-indexing. And, you know, once it finds that connection between Mob and Mob Psycho 100, it's like, that's it. That's all you want out of this. You know, if this thing d nobody searches on, it, we're not going to, you know, we don't care. It's just not going to show up anymore. Um, and I think it, you know, it results in things like this where, you know, it, it doesn't matter if your fans like it, if it's not popular generally, it's just not going to show up or vice versa. Um, and so I think just Mob Psycho 100 is one of those things where it's, you know, um, and now who, somewhere yeah. there's a graph that's like Mob Psycho, it's doing this, doing this, suddenly it's enormously <laughs> popular. This franchise is worth billions now. Clearly, like, wow. we need to associate Google image searches with Mob even more with Mob Psycho yeah. 100. <laughs> it'll, it'll be a feedback loop where it just now it just can't stop. Exactly. That'll just be everything forever. Yes. It'll be just Mob Psycho. Like, wow. wow. Life is strange. It's all oh, the internet. The internet, it never ceases to amaze. Uh, I, love, yeah. I, love, I love the internet. I can, I can just see it now. Death and destruction from the Navy. Enter Sailor Moon. Sailor Moon. <laughs> ah, yeah. Sailor. What? Well, you know this is Sailor. this might lead to some really amusing like high school or middle school styled like term papers mm -hmm. about mafia <laughs> and the mob. <mafia. Yeah. laughs> and that somebody somewhere is going to get caught up mm -hmm. in that. They're going to come in and be like, so, "Here's my report on the mob," and there's going to be Mob Psycho 100 <laughs> in the front of it, and be like, "Oh." So, so Steve, 
go on Google Image Search in a private window and search Sailor. Oh. Oh, dear God. <laughs> Is it going to be the village people? Nope. Oh. It's going to be... What is it going to be? It's going to be... You're fucking God in hell. Oh. Hey, easy. Right. Oh, it's past 10. Past 10. <laughs> We're good. We're good. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. It's Sailor Moon. Sailor Moon's right there. It's not all Sailor Moon. Like, the first Sailor row Moon. is Sailors. But then it's just right. Sailor Moon, Sailor Moon, Sailor Moon, Sailor Moon. It's like, I'm wow. <laughs> it is very odd to see the, the sort of Sailor Moon stuff interspersed with actual guys in, <laughs> in like, their Sailor uniforms. <laughs> <laughs> like, mm -hmm. It gives you a total inter different interpretation of the U.S. Navy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> it's also funny that the, like, suggested, like, the little bubbles of, you know, clip, you know, Sailor clip art, Sailor uniform, Sailor costume, none of those have anything to do with Sailor Moon. It's all, you know, drawing, dress, nautical, right. captain. 18th huh. century. Yeah. Given all of these Sailor Moon oh, stuff, maybe. you'd think there'd be a few of those in there. Huh. Hmm. Um, never bet against anime. You know? <laughs> anime oh. is always there. Watching. Waiting. 